Dan, the only son of his family, had a unique connection to his deceased father, whom he had never met. Even though his father passed away before Dan's birth, he often appeared in Dan's dreams, wearing a formidable camouflaged military uniform. In these dreams, Dan's father walked towards him with a loving and concerned smile, leaving a lasting impression on Dan's mind. Growing up, Dan cherished the memory of his father's military uniform, and it fueled his aspiration to become a soldier himself. As he approached the age of military service, Dan expressed his desire to enlist in the army to his mother. However, being an only child, his mother was understandably worried about his safety and strongly opposed his decision to join the military. This disagreement led to frequent quarrels between Dan and his mother, causing tension in their relationship. In an attempt to find a resolution, Dan and his mother agreed to leave his fate up to chance. They decided that Dan would participate in a process known as red card capture, where individuals draw lots to determine whether they will be selected for military service. This method allowed them to rely on luck rather than solely relying on their opposing opinions. On the day of the red card selection, Dan anxiously awaited his fate, praying for a red card that would grant him the opportunity to join the military. Conversely, his mother, filled with worry and concern, hoped for a black card that would spare Dan from the dangers of military service. The moment arrived, and to Dan's great joy, he drew a red card. However, when he turned to share his excitement with his mother, he discovered her in tears. Confused and taken aback, Dan rushed to comfort his mother, trying to understand the reason behind her distress. He speculated that his mother might be worried about his well-being or afraid of him being sent to the border. Determined to ease her concerns, Dan took his mother home to rest and reassured her of his commitment to his chosen path. Time passed, and the day finally came for Dan to join the army. Accompanied by his mother, they arrived at the company where Dan would begin his military journey. To his surprise, upon seeing Dan's mother, the soldiers and trainers warmly greeted her as if they had known each other for a long time. This unexpected familiarity left Dan bewildered. Before parting ways, Dan's mother handed him a protective talisman a whistle. Dan questioned its purpose wondering if it could truly protect them from danger. The skeptical, he accepted the whistle. For the next two months, Dan underwent rigorous training, successfully completing his initial training. He was then transferred to a different division called the Sentinels Division, where he was considered a newcomer. On his first day in the division, Dan overheard senior soldiers gossiping about the arrival of a new recruit. They discussed how the new soldier would be assigned guard duty at the Omri, relieving the others from the responsibility. Although Dan heard their conversation, he didn't pay much attention to it, considering it a casual remark. As time went by, the day arrived for Dan to choose his duty. He had already decided to opt for night duty, allowing him to rest during the day and practice less. Dan's motivation for becoming a soldier had primarily been influenced by the admiration he had for their cool uniforms. As night approached, Dan made his way towards the guard stationed in front of the Omri. Upon his arrival, he encountered Sergeant John a senior soldier responsible for overseeing the area. Without hesitation, Dan saluted as a gesture of respect. Sergeant John beckoned Dan to join him inside the guard post, 
where he proceeded to explain the nature of their work there. Once the briefing was complete, just before departing, Sergeant John emphasized a crucial instruction to Dan. Sergeant John, you must never fall asleep during your night shift, particularly at one o'clock. Dan, understanding the gravity of the instruction, responded promptly, Dan, yes, sir, I understand. Sergeant John assured Dan that he would periodically check in on him to ensure compliance with this important rule. Sergeant John, I will be making regular rounds to inspect your post. Dan acknowledged the surgeon's statement with a respectful reply. Dan, yes, sir, I will be ready. With Sergeant John's departure, Dan devoted himself to his duties with unwavering determination. He performed his assigned tasks diligently, fully committed to maintaining the security of the Omri. After some time had passed, the clock struck one o'clock, signaling a crucial hour during Dan's watch. It was at this precise moment that Dan noticed a soldier approaching him, carrying a large backpack. As the soldier drew nearer, Dan noticed that his camouflage uniform featured a distinctive, broad-striped pattern and antiquated design that evoked a sense of nostalgia. Intrigued by the soldier's appearance, Dan prepared himself for encounter, uncertain of what awaited him and how this individual in the old-fashioned uniform would affect his night's duty. Despite Dan's lack of interest in the soldier's outfit, he couldn't help but wonder why soldiers were walking around with backpacks so late at night. The soldier approached the border where Dan was stationed and sat down beside him. Recognizing the soldier's seniority, Dan immediately saluted him. The soldier initiated the conversation, inquiring about Dan's newcomer status. Dan confirmed that he was indeed new and proceeded to question the soldier about the late-night walk and the large backpack. Dan said, Yes, I'm new here. Who are you? And why are you walking so late at night with such a big backpack? The soldier explained his situation as a soldier on rotation stating that he would be returning home the next day to see his wife and children. However, due to the lack of transportation at that hour, he had decided to rest there until morning. Dan expressed his happiness for the soldier, glad that he would soon reunite with his loved ones. Curiosity led Dan to ask about any rules he should be aware of. Dan said, By the way, are there any specific rules I should know about here? The soldier's expression shifted slightly, and he responded cryptically. Soldier said, Whoever is on duty here must never fall asleep, especially at one o'clock. Dan assured the soldier that Sergeant John had already emphasized the importance of staying awake during his shift. Dan said, I know. Sergeant John reminded me. Noticing the soldier's frown, Dan inquired about the cause of his concern. The soldier dismissed it and changed the topic, asking Dan if he was afraid of ghosts. Dan admitted his fear but mentioned that he had never encountered one. The soldier seemed relieved by Dan's response and they engaged in conversation throughout the night. As morning approached, the soldier stood up and bid Dan farewell before walking away. At seven o'clock, Dan finished his shift and returned to the dormitory to complete his chores and get some rest. In the evening, as he prepared for his guard duty at the Omri, Dan coincidentally encountered a group of senior soldiers. Intrigued by his assignment from the previous night, they questioned Dan about his experience. Senior soldier said, Were you on duty at the Omri last night? Dan said, 
Yes, I was. Senior soldier said. Did you notice anything unusual? Dan said. No, I didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Senior soldier said. Did you encounter anyone? Dan said. I only met Sergeant John. He came to explain my duties to me. The senior soldiers were shocked to hear the mention of Sergeant John and quickly walked away, leaving Dan puzzled by their reactions. Despite the encounter with the senior soldiers, Dan proceeded with his guard duty as usual. He met with Sergeant John, who reiterated the rules and responsibilities before leaving him to fulfill his duties. As time passed, the clock struck one o'clock, and Dan noticed the soldier from the previous night returning, still carrying the large backpack. The soldier approached and sat by the border, just as he had done before. Dan, surprised by his presence, inquired about the soldier's delayed departure. Dan said, Oh, aren't you going home yet? The soldier explained that Sergeant John had instructed him to purchase food for him. Soldier said, Sergeant John asked me to go buy something for him to eat. Perplexed, Dan questioned the significance of this information. Dan said, So what does that have to do with anything? The soldier's response sent a chill down Dan's spine, revealing an unsettling connection. Soldier said, Do you see that grocery store across the street? Dan looked around but failed to spot any grocery store in sight. Dan said, Where? I don't see any grocery store. The soldier proceeded to share a disturbing revelation. Soldier said, there used to be a grocery store there, but it's closed now because it encountered a ghost. Taken aback, Dan couldn't help but inquire further about the existence of ghosts. Dan said, are there really ghosts? The soldier affirmed their presence, pointing towards a road across the street. Soldier said, yes. Do you see the road right in front of you, across the street? Dan acknowledged its visibility. Dan said, yes, I see it. The soldier continued with a haunting confession. Soldier said, That's right, I died right there. Dan, stunned and bewildered, struggled to comprehend the soldier's revelation. Dan said, What? How is that possible? Then the scene cuts to Dan seeing himself in a well behind the armory. It was then that Dan realized he had fallen asleep. But why did he end up in the well? Dan scrambled to get himself out of the well but found that he could not get out of the well because a hand reached from behind and pressed Dan's shoulders, preventing him from rising. Dan turned to see who it was, and to his surprise, it was the same soldier. Soldier said, Where, Where are, are you going, going in, in such, such a hurry? hurry? Dan said, What are you doing? Why are you pressing me? Soldier said, You, you came, came as, as a ghost, ghost to guard, guard the armory, armory my, my friend. friend. Dan shouted, Help! Help. The soldier said, Die! Die. The soldier pressed Dan into the water, and Dan began to suffocate. After a while, Sergeant John's voice shouted from above, whistle. whistle. Dan remembered the whistle given by his mother, which she insisted he always carry with him. Dan picked up the whistle hanging from his neck and blew it, creating a loud sound that echoed through the water. Startled, the soldier's grip on Dan's shoulder slipped, allowing him to quickly climb out of the water. Upon reaching the top, Dan saw no one around, leaving him shocked and frightened. Dan, in a state of panic, ran back to the dormitory, shouting, Ghost! Ghost! all the way! As everyone in the dormitory heard his cries, they woke up and found Dan running towards them, his face filled with fear. The surgeon stationed at the dormitory rushed over to comfort Dan, concerned about his state. He asked Dan what had happened, but Dan could only utter the words, Meet a ghost, meet a ghost. The surgeon gently guided Dan to sit down, allowing him some time to calm down before encouraging him to share the details of his experience. Dan proceeded to recount the encounter with the ghostly soldier who had pressed him into the water, including the involvement of Sergeant John. To the surprise of Dan, the surgeon did not react with shock or skepticism. Instead, the surgeon believed Dan's account and proceeded to reveal the full story behind the events at the armory. The surgeon began, 
The story goes back over 20 years ago when there was a soldier named Tim. It was Tim's last day in the military and he was set to be discharged and return home. However, Tim had frequent conflicts with Surgeon John. On that final night, the surgeon continued, Sergeant John ordered Tim to be on duty in front of the armory, despite Tim being entitled to rest and having no further responsibilities. It was a clear case of bullying by Sergeant John. At 1 o'clock a.m., Sergeant John arrived to inspect the armory and instructed Tim to buy groceries from the grocery store across the street. Tragically, as Tim crossed the road, he was struck by a speeding truck, resulting in his instantaneous death. The surgeon's voice carried a tone of remorse as he continued. That incident weighed heavily on Sergeant John's conscience. Before long, he took his own life by hanging himself at the armory. Since then, there have been frequent sightings of the ghost of Surgeon John, but sightings of the ghost soldier named Tim have been rare. The surgeon's account shed light on the haunted history of the armory, explaining why nobody dared to go on duty there anymore. The revelation left Dan with a mixture of astonishment, fear, and sympathy for the unfortunate soldier named Tim and the guilt-stricken Surgeon John. In a surprising revelation, the surgeon at the dormitory disclosed to Dan that Surgeon John, the same surgeon involved in the haunting events at the armory, was none other than Dan's father. The surgeon explained that all the surgeons in the unit were aware of Dan and his mother, recognizing them as family. As this realization sank in, Dan's understanding deepened. The soldier he had encountered in the well and the ghostly figure he often dreamed of were, in fact, manifestations of his own father. The pieces of the puzzle fell into place, and Dan recognized the profound connection he had been longing for. Moreover, Dan came to understand that the whistle given to him by his mother was, in fact, his father's whistle. It carried a profound symbolism and served as a tangible connection between father and son. With these revelations, Dan's perspective on his dreams, his father's presence, and his own path as a soldier underwent a profound shift. The ghosts that once seemed haunting and mysterious were now intertwined with the love, protection, and guidance of his father. The newfound understanding brought a mix of emotions to Dan. Gratitude for his father's watchful presence, sadness for the burdens he carried, and a sense of purpose as he carried his father's legacy forward. It was a bittersweet revelation that left Dan with a deeper appreciation for the sacrifices and complexities of his family's history. Thank you for your listening.